I don't care. You only apologize when you do something wrong. Break it down so somebody can understand it, like you were talking to grandma. Ooh, I like that one. You can accept help. Hey, diva of insurance. How are you? Hello, Kelly. This is super cool because um, we're recording the podcast when we're in the same state, but very, very far away in the same state. It's actually the second time we've done this. This is true. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Guys, if one you we want to know what like, it's like. One, we were only like 20 minutes away or 10 minutes away because there was COVID in my house. That's right. And this time you're on the other side of the mountains, but still in the same state. Actually, I was thinking about that dinner that you told me to get from the Indian place. <gasps> we don't, I was looking at our local Indian place. Andrew doesn't like Indians. So we don't order it too much. And, um, but I'll do it on my own. And they don't have that dish. And I was like, kind of upset Panin about curry. it. Mm. Yeah. So if, if I see you tomorrow night, maybe we have to do that. It's, it's actually Thai. Oh, oh, maybe, yeah, that would be dish. Well, I was thinking maybe we go there for dinner tomorrow night. Let's do it. I have to leave Wenatchee, though. I'm not good at leaving Wenatchee. I get stuck here a lot. <laughs> Let's so, go make sure that doesn't happen. Yes. Well, we're here because obviously we have our WOW customer service course that is live and in charge. I shouldn't say that. It's coming live on the 15th of the month. And so we're gearing up to launch that. But you can actually get it right now. So if you go to our website, you can buy it now and you'll get it when it launches. So that is a huge opportunity. Um, but if you, you buy it ahead of time, you get some bonuses too. Heck yeah. Who doesn't like the freebies, right? The BOGOs. But it's free. <laughs> so we're passionate about customer service people because they are literally the largest group of employees in insurance, right? Number one. Number two, they're the heart and soul of your business and they're managing the millions of dollars of premium you have. Yeah, the least amount of time. Success. Yeah, and we spend the least amount of time giving them the tools and the skills that they need to be successful. So we don't want that, right? So we created a customer service training. Wow, customer service training, because it can't just be customer service training. <laughs> and part of that is inside of our trainings, we do kind of like 12 philosophies. And these are like the backbone of all of our trainings. And my thing, Stephen, is when you master these philosophies, it helps you just make the decision, the right decision. So training becomes a lot easier. So a lot of times you do training and it's like, where to point and click, what the coverage means. With soft skills training, I find the first step we have is we have to get the right mindset. And then as we're receiving training information, it makes so much more sense. Or if we're in that gray area moment where training's not perfect because there's a gap and you can't plan for everything, they have those principles to say, okay, what would APP tell me to do? Well, and I think a lot of times too, like as an owner or manager, we been in a lot of more difficult situations than some of the staff has been. Right. So when the service things come up, they freeze or they panic or they don't know what to do. And we're like, well, why didn't you jazz? And we think it's common sense. So I think with the soft skill training too, it's helping the staff understand the theory or thought or a different way to look at things as well. Yeah, absolutely. And it's also so much easier to play Monday morning quarterback on everything, right? Like, oh, wait, we should have done this. It's like, well, in the moment, there was no freaking notes in the system and this was happening and Safeco was down, not smashing Safeco, but here our website was down. It's really easy to critique somebody. It's much harder to be in the moment when you're, your brain's processing and you're looking at everything. But I want to stop for a second before we dive into some of these principles. And I don't think we're going to have time to go through all the principles. So we're going to have a cliffhanger of you must go check out our blog. I think you already shot one out too. You were like, document, document, <laughs> document. Document, document. That was the freebie. That was the free first one. That was the free first one. But maybe we'll go through our 12 and we'll give like our top ones that we like. Love it. But I want to talk for a second. So obviously you were the coup, <laughs> the coup of Cross Insurance Agency, West Coast Cross for my East Coast friends. Wow. <laughs> How many team members at were there at Cross at like the height of? The height was 25. Okay. So you had 25 people, all different levels of their career, all different skill sets, personal, commercial, farm, which is always different. VA, customer service, life skills. Yeah. I think one of the things that people really struggle with is training customer service people because there's never time. It's hard to pull them off the phones. The customer service team, let's be honest, most people don't love going to training or hearing training. We don't know what to train on. We don't get much feedback. So like, I feel like this group doesn't get training. So I'm just curious, like, how did you approach training at Cross? Because you guys were really good. You guys did have a good cycle. It was part of everybody's day-to-day -day operations. 
And I think everybody at Crossley believed in training too. Right. And I think a lot of it came down to, we've had to make the commitment to make it routine. Mm -hmm. So we did weekly meeting for months. I mean, it was an hour a week by department where we could really focus on what people needed. Yeah. And then we booked one-on-ones with people that needed extra extra help with skills, or maybe they were really strong with something and we wanted to find out why they were so good at it. So we would spend time with them both on the positive and where they were struggling so that we could then bring it back and share it with the rest of the team. And as they got more comfortable, we started doing like every other week, but we still kept it at once a month at the end, just to make sure everybody was still on the same page. And we really made sure that everybody was getting the same message all together. So it wasn't like, well, Susan's sad, but Sally told me to, but Dawn did it this way. Just really trying to make sure it was cohesive. That's super important because a lot of agencies I get to walk into, the training program is shadow somebody. And then the training shadows three people and it ends up being so much more confused because everybody's doing something different. Everybody's telling them to do something different. And it's like, hold up. I think the whole people need to be trained. <laughs> like right. We need to bring our whole authentic self into training and, get, and work some of that stuff out. And I'll say this too. I think a lot of times, like in your role being like the chief operating officer, it's a little different, but a lot of agencies aren't that size or haven't figured out how to to attract a Steven, which by the way, ladies and gentlemen, he's off the market. He's at APP, okay? (laughs) So don't go hollering. Don't be hitting up my link unless you need some APP training. We track everything. So I'll know if you email him. (laughs) He's mine, ladies and gentlemen. I'm on all social media at Diva Insurance. Just (laughs) saying. They don't have that. And so I think training becomes a burden on the person who's responsible for training. And then they kind of push it off because there's other burning buildings. The the message is, guys, your biggest investment's payroll. The biggest team on in any agency is a service team. And you have a lot of frustrations a lot of time with service teams because you wish they did things differently. The answer is training. And so we have that availability to help agencies, of course. But this isn't an infomercial This is a podcast and we're here to drive massive value to all of our loyal listeners. So we have 12 philosophies. So Steven, should we share with everybody what they are first? What do you think? We should. Let's let's just list the 12 and then we'll pick our top two each. How's that? We'll we'll, we'll, we'll dish on our top 12. We'll, We'll dish on our top 12. So the first one is be a relationship builder, customer team relationship builder. So not just a transaction person. No, build a relationship. You have to actually build rapport and relations with people. Number two. You want you? I'll let you do them. Oh, I'm gonna. Oh, perfect. I'm so excited. I get to talk a whole lot. I love to talk. (laughs) So, right versus fat. You could provide good service in a quick pay, making sure it's right. It doesn't have to be lightning fast. It has to be right. Otherwise, we spend ten times more time fixing the problem. Or we don't ask all the questions and we create a problem. (laughs) We do. Number three, focusing on what the policy is insuring. The item that it insures, not the policy itself. That's what people care about. They care about their home. They don't care about their policy. They care about their jewelry. They don't care about the policy. Bling, bling. The client is entitled to their feelings. If they have them. If they have them. (laughs) It's insurance is complicated. We're going to let them have their feelings, but still help them decide what they need. First impressions matter is number five. Ding, ding, ding. If I answer the phone like this, you probably don't want to talk to me very long. But I'm like, hey, what's going on? How can I help you? And you are a little more excited. The client's going to be a little happier to talk with you. (laughs) I love it. Number six. If it's not in the management system, this is my number one. I'm just saying, if it's not in the management system, it didn't happen. And I think you're like, this didn't happen. Screen, I can't defend it when it comes to ENF. <laughs> I cannot pick up the phone and help you when the customer's mad if it's not in the system. Help me I help you. I can't dig through your desk looking for notes because you might be working from home and I don't want to drive. <laughs> and you don't want me to show up at your front step. And I don't, yeah, you're probably wearing your pajamas right now if you're working at home. You're cute from here up. <laughs> we, <laughs> number seven, we can't care more about the client's insurance than they do. <sighs> a lot of times we get stuck where we're like, but they really, but, but and we make these gorgeous things and clients like, that's great. Or we call somebody 700 times to make their payment and then we don't do renewal review calls because we don't have time. Yes. 
<laughs> so we can't care more about their insurance than they do. No, it's, it's their it's their insurance. <laughs> it is their insurance. Theirs to, to deal with. Number eight, no apology. This is going to be hard apologize. for me to pick my top two, by the way. I'm sorry. I'm I'm like, ooh, I like that one. Right. Well, I think I think you wrote this list, so you probably are really passionate <laughs> about most of these. This Num- feels very familiar to me. <laughs> Number nine, focus on the outcome, not on the task. Focus. And whoever on wrote the this outcome. is really awesome. Whoever wrote these twelve is really smart. <laughs> right. What is the outcome? Like the task, we get hundreds of tasks, but what is the outcome? What do we need to happen at the end of the rainbow? We that's what we need to focus on, not just pushing the paper along. Yeah, my favorite one on that is someone calls in to make a payment. You take their payment. That's a task. We didn't get from their contact information. Offer to get them on EFT. Offer to do a review of that. Send them over EFT form just in case, even though they said they didn't want one. Say, I, in case you change your minds. By the way, you're spending $8 a month on your insurance to pay this way. That's $100 a year. I thought I'd be able to save you some money since you tell me all the time how expensive insurance is. It's the t- outcome. Okay, sorry. I said I wasn't going to talk, but you you got this. No, you're good. That was that was. You're very passionate about. I get. I'm passionate about all these. I'm looking at these. Damn. This is my second favorite, which sometimes flips to the first. The Nana Principle. Break it down like you're talking to your yaya, <laughs> your Nana, your Mima. <laughs> I mean, Grandma. We can call them whatever we want. Mine was Yaya. Kelly's. I'm guessing was Nana. And a Nana and a Grandma. Well, I had a Nana, I still have a grandma. (laughs) Okay, I had a Yaya and a grandma, but Yaya was the Greek one. Or my aunt calls herself a Glamma. Oh, a Glamma. Yeah. I think I'll be a Glampa. That's it. Someday, I'll be a Glampa. And then number 12, everyone's role is agency growth. Even service people? Isn't that producers? I'm not a salesperson. Can you focus on growth? I'm not a salesperson. Growth is as simple as stopping a cancellation, people. Like literally just like, oh, do you mind if I ask where you went? Can I review that and make sure you got what you thought you got? Save the account. It's considered growth because they were going to leave. Yeah, I love it. Top two for Kelly. Mm, I mean, we talked about this before, so I know where you're going to go. So I'm not going to do those. Um, I can pick a different one. No. I'm pretty passionate about just about anything. I don't know which one of these is one and two, but these are- that's fine. Definitely, we can't care more about the client's insurance than they do. Um, I'm very passionate about that. And I'm also, 1.5 is raise your hands. <laughs> and two <laughs> is no apologies. <laughs> no apologies. I, I can't. I'm just, I'm so passionate about this these topics because, oh, all right, well, tell me what your two are. <laughs> so, so mine, mine. They, so all 12 of these all intertwine, like throughout yeah. your day, all 12 are very important, yep. but I especially get really bad, with, especially when doing data cleanup or coaching. And I would be like, the blue, blah, 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 with the kingdom of her, with the sprocket and the sprog, with, then they grew the intermolecular and people would be like, can you fix it? <laughs> so, the Nana principle, right? Explain it like you're talking to your grandma. If I wanted my grandma to do something, bless her heart, she finally got a cell phone with the really big numbers on it. And she would charge it once a week and she would only turn it on when she was in the car. (laughs) Just in case. Just in case. She had an emergency, but she wouldn't answer it. No, because she's driving. (laughs) But we had to explain to her the whole process and why she needed one and it was for emergencies and we really had to break it down. And then it had to be the simplest thing in the world for her to adapt to it. So I think sometimes we get stuck really overcomplicating the situation or using a lot of insurance jargon Yeah. instead of finding the pain point, explaining in basic terms the importance of the policy or what it does, and then helping the client make the decision. Well, also when you confuse, you lose, right? So if your client's confused and they won't say that they don't understand because they bought insurance for 20 years and- And they don't want to, they don't want you to think they're stupid. Correct. And they don't even know what to ask because they're not even clear what you're talking about. And so like subrogation, endorsement, comprehensive, umbrella policy. Is that going to ring? Is that that? Or even like even cyber liability isn't really cyber really like it's just data points. So we just have to like really slow things down and make it easy for people to digest so they understand it. And when they understand it, they will buy more insurance. When they don't understand it, the door gets shut because they see no value. 
Well, I think one of the fun things that we did was we had everybody pick one coverage when they were doing account reviews to get used to offering an upsell. They pick one coverage, they learn it really well, they break it down super simple to where they could explain it to anybody. And while they were on the phone, they would be like, oh, did you know that loss of use is, and they would tell the story and why it was important. And for 11 cents a month, we can increase that for you. And they were so excited at the end of the day when they got that $5 increase. I know. But it's helpful for the customer. The customer has better coverage and the agent's getting confidence in being able to explain the coverage. So I'm not making fun of the $5 coverage. I think it's an amazing place to start. But the Nana principle, break it down so somebody can understand it. Like you were talking to grandma. Or yeah, yeah. Or yeah, yeah. Yes. I love the, you can't care more about their insurance than they do because I see so many customer service professionals getting drained and because they feel like it's their duty to fix people's insurance. And when I say fix, I mean like so-and-so is upset that their rate went up. So-and-so lives in a fire zone or so-and-so is being non-renewed because they didn't clean up all the crap on their property. And I've called them 27 times and they won't return my call. And it's like, you're so stressed out. You're trying to like beg carry. It's like sometimes the, like the carriers coming off of risk or increasing rate is generally for due purpose. I feel like we get so involved. If they're going to be so mad. I have to fix this for them as opposed to just stopping and saying, you know what, Mr. So-and-so, you had a DUI. That's why your rates went up. Well, I think the light bulb moment too, for a lot of service agents is giving them that power to be yes. like, Hey, your policy is non-renewing. Here's why. If you want assistance with this, I need a response by. Mm -hmm. And set a deadline. Give yourself 30 days. Give yourself whatever you need. And if they don't respond, do another quick email or call follow-up and be done. Close the file. Then yeah. if something happens, you've offered, you've set a deadline, and they didn't respond. And I feel like we dive in on our worst customers and go to the end of the earth and burn the earth to the ground and backlog our whole day spending the worst seven customers hours. Are the meanest customers. Right. And like there are some properties are just uninsurable. And yes, they're your customer right now, but that doesn't like you have to be intelligent. And what we are doing is sacrificing proactivity on the customers that are our best customers that don't need much. And so, and then I see these drained look on customer services. Like, I don't know what I'm going to say in that. I don't know how I'm going to fix it. Their policy laps. It's like their policy laps. You called them 17 times, the carrier sent them 15 pieces of mail. Like, I don't feel sorry for this person. I don't have feelings. So that's part of it. But I, I do. I went through extensive feeling training. <laughs> you found a feeling. I found feelings. Actually, I do. I like winning. I like, is that a feeling? Yes. Like winning. Yeah. I like that. I have, I have those feelings, but I don't have like, it's like, I'm not going to freak out because someone didn't pay their bill and that's their responsibility and spend all my time and then not get to the customers who are paying their bills and being able to add value to their lives. It really upsets me that the gas company doesn't call me before they cut off my gas. They just send me like 17 notices. Right? Like, I don't know anywhere else where we take it so personally. Like, even like life-saving medication at CVS, like that I'll forget to pick up. Not that I'm not on life-saving medication, but like I, you know, it's like, dude, they freaking text you and like call you once and then they put it back. <laughs> yep. It's like, and after you do it a couple of times, after they put it back a couple of times, they learn and they will give you one warning only. Yeah. It's like... <laughs> You must pick this up by, and it's yeah. your only warning. Yeah, and it's in hot demand. Three other people need it. So <laughs> we're going to sell this medication one way or another. So Not that either of us are horrible about remembering our, to pick up our medication. I've just I heard am. stories. I like the ones that come to my house that get mailed to me like in 90-day shipments. Yeah. So your next one. Document, document, document. If it's not in the system, it didn't happen. Mm. There has been more training time in my life spent due to lack of documentation, then I care to ever repeat. It's pretty simple. Did the client call? Put a note in the system. Did they send right. an email? Attach it to the system. We overcomplicate the documentation. Like I love customer service people. I just did a whole renewal review training today launch and some little spent, but like you get in a training room with customer service reps and they're like, Okay, what about the renewal that has 15 investment properties, seven owners, and they're on two different policies in different states, and I'm not licensed in that state, and how do we do the renewal review? I'm like, <laughs> how often I does mean, it happen? Like, is this a daily occurrence? <laughs> so, like, but then they go through documentation, and it's like, 
well, when should I document this email? Should I document every email? Should I do this? Should I do that? And I respect it because they want clarity. Like that's customer right. service. They want to execute a vision. But I'm like, you talk to somebody, you put a note in. That's it. There's been several times where there's been good documentation in the file. A client is upset, threatening to sue or whatever. I can go back to the file and go, we called you on this day at this time yeah. and left a voicemail. Did you want to listen to it? <laughs> we sent you an email that you responded to on this day at this time. Well, you must have sent it to my wife. No, you're the one that responded. So unless your wife's in your email, and then that's a home issue, not a me issue. Then we called you again, and then we sent another email. So you knew you didn't have this covered. Well, nope, I would have always paid for it had I known what it was. Well, it looks like we also sent you a letter that clearly <laughs> outlined that it was X dollars per month. Actually, my courier pigeon is at your doorstep right now. that said, you people are just trying to rob me. I refuse to pay $3 more a month for my insurance. I refuse. I'm out. I'm not doing it. No, I the documentation thing, and this is what I tell people, and people get real quiet in a training or when I drop this down, I'm like, if you don't document your file, it's literally the most selfish thing that you could do to the agency, to the team, to the client, to yourself. You're literally violating everybody that could ever touch that file again. And I'm like, so do you want to be selfish? And we're like, no. Do you know how you are a bad documenter? When you come back from vacation and nobody's touching you your file. <laughs> Or no one wants to know how you're a good you. documenter is when you come back from vacation and people have touched your life. That's so true. <laughs> so okay, that's a very general statement. Just saying. Yeah. So my next one was no apologies. Oh my gosh. I'm just going to speak to our female following because, and I'm not trying to be stereotypical, but there's a lot of female customer service reps and in insurance. Like it's just the highest percentage of the population. Ladies. In any part of your life, I don't care if you're dealing with your kid, your vet, your husband, your mother-in-law, I don't care. You only apologize when you do something wrong. So right. like when somebody's like, I'm so sorry, your rate went up. What? We apologize when we do things wrong. We don't apologize for things that we can't control. I'm sorry the carrier's canceling you. Sorry that you have to pay a late payment fee. And while you do that is it devalues you. It makes the client think that you did something wrong. So now they don't trust you. It's weeny, it's weak. You can say instead, hey, I can understand why this. It's you're frustrated that your rate went up. You don't say, I'm sorry your rate went up. I'm so sorry. I struggle with the apologies all the time because I just feel like I screw enough stuff up. I have to save my apologies <laughs> for my mess ups. <laughs> I can't waste them on other people's problems. <laughs> It's, it's kind of like the boy that cried wolf. Like he said it so many times it lost its value. Clients feel the same way. Like if every time they call it, you're so sorry. The time you really need to be sorry, they're going to be like, yeah, that's what you said the other 14 times. Exactly. Exactly. And then it just starts plumbing out of your mouth like all the time. You know, I'm sorry, dinner's not ready on time. Well, you know what? I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else wanted to go pick up the kids or do the dishes before they make dinner, then dinner would have been ready on time. And maybe it's just me being 40 and I'm just over apologizing. Like I apologize when I do wrong things, but I, I'm not, I'm not apologizing if I don't do something wrong. Right. And I don't think you should either. And then the other one that I liked, pulling it back up again, they're all so good. They're all Just so raise good. your hand. Oh yeah. That's a good one to end on. Raise your hand. And it was so inspiring today. It was on a three hour training at 6 a.m. in the morning, Washington time with an East Coast client, because I do those things for my people. And uh, we were talking about their little short staffed because of all the things in the hiring word world. And um, we were talking about the raise your hand principle and everyone's like, no, we have that down pat. And I'm like, what, really? They're like, yeah, we actually have a whole half day training on how you have to raise your hand if you're struggling. I was like, oh, that's so fun. Because in insurance, so many people feel like everyone's the B word, everyone's busy. So I can't ask, if I raise my hand, somebody else can get my work, then my work dumped on them. That's not right. And I was like, knock it off, raise your hand because you don't know what's coming down the pike. The manager might be saying, take new business off their plate for a hot minute. Let them get caught up. The manager might be saying, hey, we're a little short staffed. Everybody's getting McFlurries at lunch. Okay. Like <laughs> we're rocking this today. The, your manager might say, look at your tasks and find out that you are trying to reshop somebody that's lapsed for payment three times and can say, don't do it. Okay. Like let that one go. The manager might come over and say, Hey, we went a training class. Give me those five endorsements. We'll use them in training. Like you don't know, but you have to communicate that you're drowning and struggling so that you can accept help. The inappropriate action is you don't tell anybody 
reports are run or clients call in upset or bad Google reviews happen. And I just think that like a lot of us struggle asking for help and I want to change that in the insurance space. I want to know when my team's struggling, if anything, like I can pick something up or give them more time or reset an expectation or whatever it is. And agency owners want the same. That It's just that when you ask for help, you also have to be willing to accept help the way it's given to you, not micromanage it. Because everybody in insurance wants, well, you know, if we just hire more people. Oh, okay. Where do we find said people? <laughs> Where and we find like, the money for fed people. Yeah, and we have to train them. They're not like, that's an instantaneous. Like, let me go scoop one up at the store and bring it here. No problem. That's not logical. And work comes in ebbs and flows too. So like there's sometimes it's just a little crazier than others. But we have to raise our hand and communicate in a way that's like authentic and just says, hey, I'm struggling today and let help happen as the agency feels it's best. Hallelujah. That's right. Well, if anybody's interested in our other strategies, please go to our blog. We would love for you guys to check it out. Check out our customer service course. It, you, there's literally, guys, there's four ways you could get this customer service course. You could buy it out, right? Bam. And you get the BOGOs right now. You get the freebies right now if you order pre-order. You could subscribe to our online school. You get this and sales training and renewal calls and time management and cross-selling and how to reduce remarketing and commercial sales. And wait, there's more. There's role-playing videos of me and Steven. So if you've enjoyed this podcast, you could watch us role-play insurance scenarios. Which is, who doesn't love a good insurance scenario? Who doesn't love a good role-play? Right. Creepy, one of our top hitting blogs is how to role-play in your insurance agency. And I'm wondering if people are searching role-playing accidentally getting this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's good, clean, fun at least. Maybe there's some people who are into that. I, I don't know. There, I mean, the internet is a crazy place. Like there could be a whole pocket of crazy insurance agents that are into role playing. I don't know. You have to get into sub limits and, you know, co-insurance. Subrogation really has a whole new statement. So you can do that. You could also get Steven or Heath live on Zoom with your team, like lighting it up. I mean, let's be honest. Steven is like putting on a production like share for all of his virtual meetings. So there's lights, there's camera, there's not really. There's outfit changes. You do change your outfit. He will probably change his outfit because every time I see him on Zoom multiple times in the same day, it, it, it's like a whole different person or in person. So this is an awesome opportunity. First five agencies that sign up actually get a discount. What? what? I mean, I'm worth the full price, but if you can get me at a discount, I'd take it. Absolutely. Six months of customer service training for your team. So check it out, but check out the blog. You can check out our videos. We give so much stuff away. You could even do it yourself, I bet. You can. I actually had somebody reach out and say, I am so happy that APP gives me all the answers and with lots of hard work, I can figure it all out and do it myself. See, that makes me feel good about life. Or they have a whole lot of free time. Mm, that's two. <laughs> but you sure. don't need free time. You need us. So just we're there just, yeah, or they're right. smaller. And like, it's, that's like, you know, not everybody's in a, and that's why I'm passionate about the school and stuff, because you do have the opportunity no matter what size agency you are. So absolutely. Anywho, I have to let you go because I have to hop on with Lewis, but this has been an absolute pleasure, Mr. Harrington. I'm grateful for your top ones. <laughs> I feel very passionate about those as well. <laughs> Love it. Perfect. Talk All right. Bye, guys. Bye.